Hi, everybody. Welcome to Under the Hood, the show that dives into what Orby's building and why we're building it. Um, today, I'm actually in Southern California. I'm visiting some of the, the Orby team. So sorry for the lighting and maybe my audio isn't as good. But something came across uh, Tool's uh, news feed, something from Ad Exchanger, which I've heard you talk about them before. Uh, I believe you used to write columns for them with a previous startup. It didn't, um, yeah, didn't write columns, but uh, my startup one screen was written up quite a bit. So, gotcha. So something came across there um, about GM and NBC. And so I'm going to pull this article up because I'm definitely going to be uh, asking questions about this because I don't actually understand uh, too well what's going on here. So break it down for us. What what does this mean for the, like the OEMs? And should dealers are dealers going to benefit from this at all? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. This is good. This is a good one. Um, I think there was some coverage on LinkedIn about it too. So, you know, when, when the advertising industry at large talks about automotive, automotive is usually about the OEMs, the brands themselves. So if you actually look at a lot of explanations about how ad tech works, it's usually <clears throat> a picture of a Soda can, that's CPG, an airplane, travel, and then you'll see things like a vehicle. But again, it's not about the dealer, it's about the OEM. And in fact, this news is primarily starting at the dealer at the OEM level. And what does first party data in the OEM's eyes look? And this is actually the fundamental dilemma that this industry is having around like whose data is it, right? So is first party data at General Motors is direct data? Is it accumulation of all the data that's available both at General Motors within their finance data, um, you know, uh, their uh, GM finance, also all the dealerships themselves individually? <clears throat> And I, th I believe that what this is actually alluding to is the beginning of a potential big opportunity, if done right, to bring the, the power of a big brand, but giving give, but, but with the ability to, to allow dealerships to benefit from these pipes, if you will. So what this is saying is that, uh, and we know this is the future of first party data, cookie lists and so forth, is you take all of the existing data you have in your CR, your PII, your, your, all your customer records, and you basically onboard it, right? Traditionally, you'd onboard it in something like LiveRamp, which would convert it to IDs, uh, IDs that you can't really reverse engineer. And then everyone's converting to those same kind of IDs. So if you have this ID and I have this ID, oh, well, actually, it turns out that the person on uh, inside the General Motors database is the one watching NBC Peacock or this game or this movie or this sitcom in their connected TV app. So you can sort of see how this is all connecting. So it's onboarding that first party data creating a match to the NBC Unified ID, and then saying now you could go to any of NBC's properties and buy against that ID. And just keep in mind, you're going to notice this more and more on the internet. You'll be able to read articles if you subscribe, if you give your email address. Why? Because everyone needs to create a unified ID about you. So that's why you could get free articles at certain places. I mean, I was on Reuters and they actually don't charge. Of course, they're a public kind of utility in a way, AFP, Reuters, AP. But why am I getting um, free Reuters newsletters? It's because I gave them my email address, but that email address is now usable to match me to any data set that's out there, right? So what this is basically saying is, like I said, uh, and just to be clear, Comcast, NBC, Universal, all kind of one big company. Comcast actually bought Freewheel, which was a, a, a company I used to work with it, through my integration via one screen. Freewheel was an ad server for video ads. They also bought Beeswax, which is a DSP um, for brands. And so what this is actually effectively saying is that NBC created IDs. And it's part of this clean room, right? You'll also see some other stuff from, from guys like Ops Table. I know those, those guys because I was working with them when they were uh, the co-founders uh, running Ad Gear before they were acquired by Samsung. But in this example, we are also telling dealers 
to make IDs, right? Like the whole Orbi CDP is all about taking all of the first party data, whether it's from the CRM or the, the kind of the data that's being provided by the user and creating this unique ID number. And that ID number in it holds all this rich information that's targetable, but you don't have to send that off to a third party. You just create these ID numbers and then you push it to other systems. And so what this article is also talking about is the fact that, you know, cookie depre deprecation is part of this, but you can also see elements of how you, you may not want to use registration data, uh, which only updates infrequently and use that to target who you're going to buy media from. You're going to want to use the events that are happening right now on the websites and so forth. So the opportunity that I'm talking about is right. Just keep in mind that this is first about General Motors is direct brand advertising from the top. But when you actually start to see some of the OEM conversations that are happening that I'm privy to and so forth, you're actually going to start to see this this connect connectivity between what's happening on the dealer side, what's happening on the OEM side, creating this unified view on, on this side. And imagine the day when <clears throat> general, I mean, this is kind of happening with guys like Ford Direct with their audience uh, features where GM makes audiences, pushes it to the dealer's ad account and allows the dealer to buy against that. So. That's going to probably happen here is the pushing of that audience data down to agencies. But if dealers actually get an opportunity to buy media in a very coordinated fashion where General Motors says, you know what, on certain times of day and certain days of the week or even during the Super Bowl or Grammys or whenever we're buying television ads or connected TV ads, let us do the advertising from the top and they'll come into our website, build a car, select their zip code, def, uh, connect to a dealer and we'll pass you that data. And then the, then other cases where the dealer is allowed to run the ads where the, the OEM isn't. So they're not competing against each other. So this actually really opens up a lot of interesting opportunities. But right now from the surface of this, this is really first about the brand itself buying generic brand advertising against all that data. The next, it's going to be all the dealer data feeding into the OEM that is being used for better targeting. And then finally, the opportunity we're really ready for is when the dealership could also buy media against a similar fashion where they have access to GM uh, data from you know Cadillac.com and Buick.com and so forth and being able to use all that information in their own advertising further down in the funnel. Hmm. I, I want to go back to what you said about, so right now the OEMs are uh, making an effort to sort of unify the data to make, you know, one ID per consumer and how we're trying to do that with dealer groups. And it sounds like there's actually a, a benefit if you're a dealer group having multiple brands and having that one ID so you can identify is someone bouncing, is, is, how many of your uh, auto group customers are actually brand loyal to an OEM brand or to your dealership brand, your auto <clears throat> group's brand? Right. So exactly. is that, it sounds like that would be even more valuable data because like GM wouldn't be able to, to tell that because they only have GM script on. <laughs> you nailed site, it, Chris. Right? <clears throat> you nailed it. The big opportunity with this is the ability for these groups to act like their own, to act the way GM is acting with their holistic view of all of their rooftops. There are dealer groups that have 10, 20, 50, right? We have investments from a few of those larger groups and mm -hmm. their ability to create that unified ID is something we already do, in fact, right? So with a company like uh, a Holman, we actually synchronize IDs across all of their group member domains, and we make it easy for them to actually do better retargeting, better customer journey mapping, because these days you don't know, right? Like people upgrade to a different brand, 
Uh, people might be buying for children. Uh, so, you know, I'm not going to buy my kid a nice car right off the bat. It's going to be a, it's going to be a Honda probably, you know? So, so basically being able to understand households across their entire group is going to be a big, big deal. And that's what we're seeing the, the progressive groups start to think about. And it takes a lot of plumbing, you know, Chris, like it takes newer technology. It takes an awareness of how all this works. If you pull up the other tab here, you know, when you think about things like the trade desk, trade desk is where it's one of the DSPs. We're actually integrated to a different DSP uh, right now. Um, but when you look at all of these uh, systems, you have these things like unified ID. Google has topics. All of them are building some sort of ID matching. But the great thing is, Orby, with all of the CDP work we've been doing for the last few years, we're sort of a shoe in. We're, we're perfectly aligned to where the industry is going. And uh, dealer groups, like you said, especially can benefit from that. So uh, definitely uh, dealers should, should look at what's happening at the OEM level. Mm -hmm. And instead of worrying about the fight between like who owns the data, just start to get better at how you use your own data. And then when it comes time for the, all of a sudden the, the fight and the argument over data becomes a collaboration instead. And that's what I think the future of automotive data marketing and advertising is going to, it's going to bring it's exciting stuff. Nice. Well, this is uh, definitely an episode where uh, I was learning a lot about unified IDs. Uh, so if you have any questions, drop a comment, shoot us an email, send us a DM. Uh, as you can tell, we love to talk about this kind of stuff and we, we do it all day. So uh, anything else to add? Any, anything coming up? Um, I think some events in a couple weeks, but that's about it. I think we'll do it on the next round. Yeah, the next round. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.